A warm welcome to the training videos from Mady Orthopedics. The following film will give you helpful hints on patient care with the Mady M4S OA knee brace. The M4S OA is mainly used for the treatment of painful osteoarthritis of the knee. Osteoarthritis, that is wear and tear of the cartilage surfaces in the knee, can often be traced back to misalignment of the leg's axis. The orthosis uses the three-point principle to relieve pressure on the affected compartment and prevents lateral bending of the knee joint into a damaging varus or valgus deformity. The additional option of limiting extension and flexion protects the affected knee joint from damaging movements to maintain the patient's treatment status. To determine the correct size of the orthosis, please measure the circumference of the affected leg 15 centimeters above the middle of the knee joint on the medial side. You can then select the suitable product from the size chart. The knee orthosis can now be adjusted. Zero degree extension wedges are pre-installed in the M4SOA. The wedges define the radius of movement of the knee. To set the limits of extension and flexion, please first remove the side covers. Now undo the screw and pull the wedge out. You will find the replacement wedges in the wedge set. The engraved description helps you find the correct wedge. Push the new silver extension wedge into the hinge from the front. Now place the screw in the thread opening and screw tight. The black flexion wedges are slid in from the back. Now move the orthosis hinges, check the positions of the wedges and secure the hinge cover. Only the technician treating the patient may change the extension and flexion limits. In order to avoid hyperextension, extension wedges or zero degree wedges must always be inserted. The MADI bending tool can be used to help mold the orthosis closely to the patient to guarantee the best possible fit. This prevents painful pressure areas and guarantees the best possible comfort in wear, especially in the case of varus or valgus deformities of the knee. Please note the following points when adjusting the orthosis. Avoid damaging the hinges at all costs. The hinges should never get between the two bending tools. Always isolate the hinge from damaging forces by placing the counterpart in front of the hinge. The closer you set the bending tools together, the more acutely the orthosis frame bends. It is best to avoid any bending in the region of the shims under the covers. The M4S OA cannot be bent on the side with the adjustable hinges. Always use rounded bending tools to avoid damaging the frame. Remember that a closed system like a rigid frame brace can only be bent a certain amount. Mold the orthosis in small increments to match the contour of the leg and avoid overcorrection. Replaceable pads can also be used on the medial sides. This guarantees that the orthosis fits perfectly, even on very thin knees or when swelling varies. The orthosis should be worn directly next to the skin to ensure the best possible fit. Make sure that all the straps are open. To prevent incorrect fastening of the Velcro straps, it is recommended to close them again afterwards. It's best if the patient sits on the edge of a chair. Pull the orthosis over the leg and bend the knee to 45 degrees. Position the orthosis so that the middles of the hinges are at the level of the superior border of the kneecap. Make sure that the orthosis is not twisted on the leg. The straps should be secured in the order specified by the numbers, 
to guarantee the orthosis fits securely and has the optimum effect. Start with straps 1 and 2. The knee should stay bent. Now push both orthosis hinges backwards towards the back of the leg. Make sure that the hinges are positioned behind the lateral medial midline of the leg. Now fasten straps 3, 4, 5 and 6. It is now recommended to walk a few steps and check again that the orthosis fits properly. As you can see, the middle of the orthosis hinge should be positioned at the level of the superior border of the kneecap and behind the lateral medial midline of the leg. Then pull the straps tight again in the same order to prevent the orthosis slipping. If the orthosis does slip, please check that the orthosis hinge is correctly positioned at the level of the superior border of the kneecap. Check the position of the calf strap number 5. This should cross above the widest part of the calf muscle. Add padding to the inner surfaces of the knee hinges, using the extra padding supplied with the orthosis. Wear the orthosis directly next to the skin, whenever possible. The hinges above and below the knee joint can be set to reduce varus for bow leg deformities and reduce valgus in knock knee deformities, depending on the product variant. In this case, it's advisable to show the patient how to set this himself, in order to be able to adjust the orthosis to the treatment status at any time. With the patient sitting, Set the varus valgus hinges to the neutral position with the help of the Allen key. This has been achieved if the pad lies flat on the orthosis hinge, but exerts no or only very gentle pressure at most. With the patient now standing, set the force by turning both adjusting screws one quarter of a turn. This setting is a good starting point when wearing the brace for the first time. Make sure the orthosis has been applied properly. For conservative treatment, the orthosis should not be worn for more than two hours a day. The orthosis can then be worn for longer periods depending on how well the patient tolerates it. The orthosis should, above all, be worn for activities that normally cause pain. For post-operative treatment, the orthosis should always be worn whenever the knee is weight-bearing. However, always consult the attending doctor about this. Please note that extreme settings have no therapeutic value. They simply cause more pain. The inner pads and condyle pads can be washed by hand in cold water and a mild soap solution. Leave them to dry in the air. Matey, I feel better.